I'd love to get your feedback. Obviously, you guys really do get credit. I think that you should um, for building the customer success segment. You literally wrote wrote the book. Um, you know, with the successful exit, um, you, you know, I, what could you really like lean on that was the most kind of fundamental thing to building that to that category? And if you were going to go out and build a new category, kind of what, what mistakes would you learn from and what would you avoid and what would you really kind of narrowly focus in on? Sure, totally. Yeah, one one edit, you know, I don't love the term exit because we're just we just have new investors yeah. and we're going for it. We want to you know, hopefully take the company public someday. And you know, so outside of the philosophy and quantum physics there, I never think about anything but gain sight. So um, so yeah. for me, there's no post gain sight, only gain sight. But but I to- totally agree with you. We've been really fortunate to be part of this kind of creation of a category. I wouldn't say we created it. I think it's category is always a, a collective effort. We just are sort of maybe we fanned the flames a little bit, maybe we were like the cheerleaders. On the sidelines, um, but you're right. We learned a lot along the way, and you know, kind of when um, you know, you know, um, Anthony, our first CMO, yep. and so you know, he and I have talked about this a lot. Um, Anthony Canada, for folks that don't know Anthony, um, and he has a great book on category creation, which you should check out. And you know, the basic thing we talk about is there's these kind of ingredients um, that are. I think there's kind of four or five that you know we think of as like the core ones, and then there's some mistakes we made along the way. And we wrote, we we did a presentation at Saster about this in a little detail, but high level was, you know, you want, ideally you want somebody, uh, you want to define a category in a way that you've identified a group of people that are really don't feel like they're part of some other category. Right. And so that was kind of one of the mm-hmm. big observations was this customer success thing was new and it was going to be big. And these people didn't feel like they were part of something else. They don't weren't quite part of sales. They weren't quite part of like support. They weren't quite part of engineering. And so you, you kind of identify this group. And ideally, in some ways, you pick a category, we can name that group, and it would feel like a really random name to the average person. But to that group, they'd be like, oh, this is awesome, right? And that's kind of, as you saw from the early days, you know, there were only 300 people at Pulse the first year at our conference that we do for mm-hmm. customer success. But for those... Yeah, I was there. Yeah. For, yeah, you were there. I mean, that's OG, by the way. Um, for, the, for those yeah. 300 people, that was like incredible and amazing. Like I'm finally with people like myself and for everyone else, they're like, what's customer success? I don't need, isn't that already, like you said, it does not already happen. And so that's kind of one observation is you want to kind of pick a category and name it in a way that it, to the outside world, it feels like random and like kind of niche. And to the inside, it feels like, oh my gosh, finally, like I, I have my home. Right. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and don't yeah. worry about naming it in a way that appeals to analysts or whatever investors come up with a category that feels really authentic to the people inside it. That's kind of one, one step. Second step, as you, you alluded to another part of this, which is having people inside your company that can be kind of the voice of that, that role, that category. So we were really, really fortunate, Dan Steinman, who is the first, one of the heads of customer success at Marketo, which is one of the first SaaS companies mm-hmm. that got to significant scale. And he was a customer, came into Gainsight uh, and basically became our head of customer success early on. But also the, the voice of the people in the CS field, and you know, he and then you know later on me and many others have spoken you know thousands of events and written books and all that. So having kind of somebody from, that's right. a voice of that category, right? Third third ingredient um, is really realizing that categories are about um, the the not about your company, but it's about the people in that category and their kind of job and their their sort of mindset. And so when you build content. Mm-hmm. And when you do events, focus on the people, not just your company product. So as an example, you're writing a blog post in, in Gainsight world. The blog post is not 10 things to look for in customer success software, right? Which that's a fine blog post, but that's not really category creation. The blog post is 10 things right. to negotiate when uh, getting your first customer success offer, or 10 things to look for in choosing the right CSM or 10 things to think about in designing a comp plan for CSMs, right? So it's not about gain site. It's about the, the people and the category. And then the fourth thing that we saw was basically this idea that, you know, categories, part of it is like almost creating this community that's bigger than your company and like really taking your culture and bringing it to community. You alluded to this as well, right? We have these silly music videos and all these things that we've done which really bond us to the people in our category in an incredible way. I mean, literally, we made a parody rap video and then some of our customers yeah. made their own versions of that rap video, which is like, you couldn't, it's like we're in Silicon Valley, the TV show, literally, like that's what it feels like. But for the people in our community, they love yeah. it. And the last one, which probably ties this all together is 
being willing to kind of put yourself out there and be vulnerable, like as the CEO, as the leader, as the one of the people in the company creating the category. You know, I've done lots of silly stuff. I've talked about some uh, tough stuff in front of thousands of people, like feeling lonely as a kid and things like that, and really being willing mm-hmm. to be vulnerable. So those five things, which is basically yeah. defining a category that you're willing to make it feel niche early on, having somebody or more people in your company that can kind of be the voice of that category, making everything you do be about them, about the people, not about your company, um, really thinking through how you can bring your culture into your community or category, and then being vulnerable yourself. Those are the five things we learned uh, in this process. Nice. That Yeah, that that's super helpful. And I think... I, I agree. It, it's I think why why customer success happened is that those people performing that specific task needed a home and they needed a department. Exactly right. And I think that same thing is actually happening today in revenue operations. Um, the you know the the new um, kind of cross departmental marketing and sales ultimately owning revenue ops and, and even customer success really is, is can be encompassed within that revenue ops. And we're definitely seeing that in Ringlead empowering the, those revenue operations um, professionals and really giving them a, a path to, to grow with, within their career specifically, I, which is, that, I, I think, really one of the things that happened within the customer success ecosystem as yeah, well. Yeah, you, you, you nailed it because I'm familiar with the, that space and the space you're in. And I think that's, that's a real trend, especially people listening or in that field. You know, it, the, the parallels are pretty significant because customer success, the people that are in that field, they had jobs before, right? So they, had, they were called account managers mm-hmm. or technical account managers or right. support engineers. And they weren't necessarily given the same level of strategic value and credibility and importance and career options before. And then the business changed such that you really customer success mattered and create this whole kind of new profession. And I see the same thing. You know, obviously you've got sales ops people and you've got, you know, marketing ops people and you've got CS ops people and, and, you know, maybe some of them were considered more tactical before, but now as people build a more integrated revenue organization, including at Gainsight, RevOps is so important. And my head of RevOps, you know, reports directly to me um, because it's a super important job at Gainsight and probably lots of other places. That that's pretty funny. One of my specific questions was going to be where does the RevOps function sit at Gainsight and who ultimately owns yeah. it? So um, that that's super cool. Uh, 